Just a few moments ago, President Obama made a statement about the shootings in which he praised the people at the scene who helped out, the brave bystanders who stopped things from getting much worse than they could have been. And I'll be talking to one of them in a minute. But he also talked about America's grief. I think it's important for us to also focus, though, on the extraordinary courage that was shown during the course of these events. A 20-year-old college student who ran into the line of fire to rescue his boss. A wounded woman who helped secure the ammunition that might have caused even more damage. The citizens who wrestled down the gunman. Part of what I think that speaks to is the best of America, even in the face of such mindless violence. Well, with me here in Tucson is one of the women that President Obama was talking about there, Patricia Mays, who was an eyewitness on the scene at the time when the shootings happened. The president is praising your courage for what happened. How does that make you feel? Very humble. It's, it's really more than necessary because there were two real superheroes that knocked the man down. Otherwise, the other actions would have been not available to us. Your actions were not inconsiderable. Tell us what happened. Um, well, I was uh, waiting in line to see Gabrielle, and I heard a shot, and I immediately knew it was gunshot. And in that split second, I had to make a decision whether to run or to lie down on the ground. And I decided I would be a target if I ran because the gunman was now just steps from me. And I laid down, and um, the woman next to me was shielding her teenage daughter, and he shot her. She had three wounds. Um, I expected to be next. I was laying there on the concrete wondering how bad it was going to be and how it was going to hurt. And instead of a gunshot, the shooter was now on the ground just on top of me nearly. And uh, there were two gentlemen on top of him. And he, um, they, somebody said, get the gun. And I was already up on my knees and over his waist. Um, the gun was out of my reach, but he was reaching into his pocket with his left hand and pulling out the magazine, which fell on the sidewalk. I managed to get the magazine before he could get it. Um, I got it secure in my hand. He was flailing his legs, so I next knelt on his legs and his ankles um, for a couple of seconds and noticed one of the gentlemen that had wrestled him to the ground had a head wound. He'd had a, um, a graze with a bullet and was bleeding pretty profusely. So I asked another gentleman to sit on the knees, take my place while I went to the store. They gave me some towels. I made a compress and held it on his head until the police came and secured the, um, the shooter. And then the a man was able to hold the compress to his own head. And all this time, you had the second magazine, which was full of bullets, which he could have used to shoot at people at the scene, except you had in it in your hand. hand. I'd taken it into Safeway, either, and I had such a grip on it, I didn't, um, I didn't let go of it, even going into Safeway and even holding the compress on. I finally gave it up to a female um, sheriff's department officer. Well, it was an astonishingly brave thing you did. Thank you very much for talking to us about it today. And John, stories like that are. They, they bring some hope to this kind of situation, but at the same time, I have to say, there's some slightly depressing news from America today. We've got Congress people talking about carrying guns themselves, going armed when they go back to their home states to meet their constituents. That's the state of play in America here tonight, John.